Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joel from Jonesy's and Adventure Vehicles Northwest. And today is an exciting day because we are going to debut our new and improved Cummins B-Series HD high mount kit. Stay tuned for those product details next. We are really excited about our redesign of our HD high mount kit, uh, specifically because we have added some compatibility. We have added compatibility with multiple style alternators. We have the Denso, we have the Ford series, as well as the Delco alternator. We also have added a, another series of engine. We are now offering this kit for the common rail uh, Cummins, the 2003 and later engine, as well as the previous 24 valve and the B series 6BT, 12 valve, and the 4BT. Lastly, we have integrated in the heater hose return into the lower bracket and removed it from the removable water inlet fitting. This allows you to reuse the factory Dodge Cummins T fitting as well as utilize some of the factory available lower water inlets. Let's talk about the bolts that are included in our kit. We source only Cummins compatible flange bolts that are grade 10.9 and have the correct size that matches what's already installed on your Cummins engine. Next, let's talk about the two main bracket pieces. One of the main differences that you can see is that these are now made out of aluminum. We did that for two reasons. Number one, it lowers cost. And number two, it allows for more consistent machining and better dimensional tolerances because we don't have any welded components. This piece right here is the upper air conditioning compressor mount. This piece right here is the lower alternator mount as well as the lower water inlet. Also included in our kit is the appropriate water outlet. This one <coughs> is generally used in industrial applications and takes the 54 millimeter thermostat, which is not included in the kit. Other components, we include the belt, as well as the Gates tensioner. We include the lower water inlet, and you guys will notice that uh, it does not have a side bung. This is because we machined a three quarter NPT side bung into our lower mount so that this will accept the original Cummins uh, cooler fitting. Back to this, our lower water inlet comes in the same sizes as our previous kit, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, two inch and two and a quarter. The kit also includes all of the other various bolts that you'll need to install these components. Okay, everybody, let's talk about what is not included in the kit that you may already have on your Cummins engine or you can source through our website. The first part is the alternator. We don't include the alternator. You can choose between a Denso alternator like you've seen here, which is common on all of the Dodge trucks uh, that come with the Cummins. The air conditioning compressor, which again is Dodge truck application. You can swap out the head for different line configurations to match whatever vehicle you're installing it in. So the, the <coughs> compressor is not included. Our kit currently utilizes the Gen 2 Dodge fan hub and pulley. Again, this is, can be sourced with a new pulley and new fan hub through our website. And then lastly, the 54 millimeter thermostat. We sell OEM Cummins thermostats that fit with our water outlet. Now that you guys are familiar with what is included and not included in the kit, let's go install it on the 6BT. The first component you guys are going to want to install is the actual tensioner mounting plate. It mounts to the two bolt holes right directly next to the water outlet. Now, you can mount this upside down. So you'll notice that this is biased to the top. That short dimension goes up and then you'll also utilize the middle anti-rotation pin on your tensioner. This is what your tensioner will look like once you have installed it correctly. The next component you guys are gonna to wanna to install is the water outlet. Now, it bolts on just like any other water outlet would, but there is one thing to note when you're putting the thermostat in. You can see that the thermostat has this little indexing pin as well as these bleed holes. In the thermostat housing itself, or the water outlet, there's an index. This goes just like that. Then you put your O-ring on, and then you would bolt all of this stuff together like so. 
The next component we're going to install is the upper air conditioning mounting bracket. It bolts up directly to the water outlet with the supplied three eight millimeter bolts. Now, one thing I will note is this bracket has a little bit of movement in it when you install it. So leave these three, bol three bolts loose at this point so that we can fine tune our belt alignment before we tighten it up. Okay, the next component that we're gonna install is the lower water inlet and alternator mounting bracket. It bolts up to the side of the block like so. Now, there's a recess right here that you'll install an O-ring on, and then there's also a recess right here that you're gonna install an O-ring. So you put an O-ring there, and you put an O-ring right here in this recess. Then you set your supplied water inlet on top, Put the bolts through like this. Line everything up. And again, just like the upper AC bracket, we're gonna leave this stuff loose. Now, there is one additional smaller bolt, well, shorter bolt, I should say, a 12 millimeter that mounts down at the bottom. So snug all of this stuff up, making sure that you have all of your O-rings in place. Now I did not put the O-rings in here because this is just for mock-up purposes. And then you can see this has a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle room so that you can fine tune your belt. All right guys, the next component is gonna be your alternator of choice. This one is the Denso that is the factory Dodge style. So it just slips over that lower bracket and has a through bolt which we supply and then has a nut that secures it. Now, you're not gonna wanna tighten any of this stuff down, but you are gonna wanna make it snug. So now we have the lower pivot bolt installed. You're gonna take your upper tensioner, and the upper tensioner will bolt to the AC bracket. Just like that. And then through bolt and nut like this. Now, once you get to this point, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to tighten this and you're gonna wanna tighten this bolt. You're gonna wanna tighten the two upper bolts and you're gonna wanna snug that lower pivot bolt. This is what this is gonna do is this is gonna align the alternator body to the two brackets. Okay guys, now that you have these two bolts tightened up, it's time to install the AC compressor. And that just mounts in here. Get all four bolts started and snugged up. And after you get those tightened down, we will double check our belt alignment. Okay, now it's time to double check the belt alignment. And the way I do that is I just have a nice straight piece of welding filler rod and you hold it in whichever groove you want. I'm choosing the second groove on the AC compressor and I just hold it in there with my thumb and then I rotate it around and I make sure that that welding wire lands right in the exact same corresponding groove of the alternator. Now, if it does not, then you can, because you've left these bolts loose, you can wiggle this stuff around so that it will line up. Okay, last step is gonna be to install the belt. Now, it really helps to have a friend around when you install the belt, just because the belt is pretty tight. So if you guys look how I have it routed just like this for now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the belt in around the AC compressor as well as the alternator. Make sure that it's in all of the grooves like that as well as sitting correctly in the crank and let it rest on the water pump just like that. Then get a half inch ratchet or what I have right here is a breaker bar. 
and you're going to want to pull the tensioner and then slip the belt over the water pump. And this is where it helps if you're inside a vehicle, it helps to have a friend, they can pull on this tensioner and you can slip it over the water pump. Now, this belt is intentionally going to be pretty tight. It will wear, it will stretch a little bit and it'll be easier and easier to get on as uh, it wears. just like that, let the tensioner off, and you're good to go. All right, guys, we've removed the Denso alternator, and now we're gonna show you the details of how to install the Delco alternator. This specific Delco is off of a mid-90s Chevrolet truck uh, application. A lot of the Delcos have the same uh, mounting configuration as well as the same pulley offset. And speaking of pulley, you are going to need to convert over to an eight groove pulley. None of the Delco alternators had an eight groove pulley. We supply this pulley uh, through the website as well. We have already gone ahead and installed the eight groove pulley as well as the upper alternator uh, brace. And this alternator brace bolts directly to the upper air conditioning mount with the supplied 10 millimeter bolt. So, Put this one on first and leave it snug. You don't want it to be tight at this point because you're going to have to move some stuff around. Now, this is the lower mounting assembly. And what you will notice is you'll notice that the lower brackets are offset and they have a spacer. So when you come down here, you'll see that the face of the alternator and the face of our bracket are offset by that amount. Okay, so this right here, that is how that bracket mounts. And then the other bracket goes on the other side of the alternator. Like that with the two nuts. Okay, now it's time to put the belt on. Belt goes on the same way. Run the tensioner, slip the belt over the water pump and release. Now we're gonna install the Ford G-Series alternator. This one specifically is off of a Ford with a power stroke, a 6.0 power stroke. Approximate year 2005-ish, but a lot of other models of Ford Power Stroke alternators will work. Just needs to make sure it has the um, eight groove pulley <clears throat> as well as the 68 millimeter diameter pulley. So it is simple installation. It just mounts with the three 10 millimeter supplied bolts in the corresponding threaded holes in the upper and lower bracket and on the Ford you're definitely going to want to leave it loose there's quite a bit of wiggle room in the mounting bolts and double check your uh, belt alignment before you snug everything up one other thing to note on the Ford installation if you are going to be running a two and a quarter water inlet you're going to need to trim this little web on the bottom of the alternator so that it will clear. I purposely used the two and a quarter water inlet um, for this mock-up purposes so that you can see how there is some interference here. You'll never be able to get a hose on. So there's plenty of material here. It's very thin to remove this section of the alternator web and it will not affect anything to do with the alternator. Belt insulation goes exactly the same for all of the alternators. You route it and then you just slip it right over the water pump. 
Okay guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about troubleshooting and then final installation of the high mount kit. So when you guys finally have your belt alignment double checked, everything is mocked up, everything is good, and you're going to tighten all this stuff down, use the appropriate torque specifications for those size of bolts. And I also recommend using blue Loctite on the threads. Now, if you get your high mount kit installed and then you immediately have a belt alignment problem, and in the past, we have seen some belts right up on this fan hub pulley like this. And it happens in almost instantaneously. The remedy for that belt alignment issue where it rides up on the fan hub is to install a thin washer between your tensioner mount plate and the cylinder head on the bottom bolt. So it would actually slide right between the cylinder head and the tensioner mount plate. And what this does is it actually kicks the tensioner out towards the front of the vehicle, which assists in maintaining the proper belt engagement into this fan hub. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to hear about all your cool projects. All of the links to these products are in the description below. Thanks for watching.